guys in the back. And uh, you know if you're an audio video guy, you have the hardest job in the church because if something goes wrong, what happens is about three seconds, everybody just looks to the back. And uh, as I pull ducks, and then Alex is left to, to take the blame. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for your help. Take your Bibles this morning. Turn to the book of Joshua. The book of Joshua, chapter number one. And I'm beginning a new sermon series this morning. Uh, I've entitled Conquest. That sounds kind of manly, doesn't it? Conquest. Like we're taking something over. And uh, we're going to do a study for the next several weeks in the book of Joshua uh, with that title. Today I want to preach a sermon uh, called Courageous. Now some of you guys say, that's not very original. You're right. I got it from the movie we saw last week. Most of you remember last week we went and saw the movie Courageous there in theaters. What a powerful movie. Let me say, if you've not seen that yet, uh, and you have the time, go see the movie Courageous. Well... We're diving into the first of the historic, one of the first of the historical books here in the Old Testament. This is actually the first historical book, and uh, I want to give you some things from this book to help you live your life as a believer in Jesus Christ in victory. I'm convinced most people live their life as a Christian in defeat. I'm convinced the reason why most people don't like to come to church, they don't want to have anything with God, is they think God is dead. God's not alive. What, is, what does Christianity have to offer me? I want to tell you something today. It has a lot to offer you. Eternal life in Jesus Christ. Victory for your life. I know too many people that walk around defeated, beaten down, discouraged, heartbroken. And I want to tell you something today. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is here today in this place to speak to you. And I pray that as we take some time this morning and we, and we talk about courageous as we take time in the next couple weeks to go learn about the book of Joshua, that God will speak to your heart. You know, if you came expecting to be spoken to from God today, God will speak to you. If you come here right now and you're already looking at your watch thinking, all right, how long is this preacher going to be until he's done? Just put your watch away. It'll be the next three hours, all right? And, uh, all right, two and a half. But uh, why don't you stand with me as I begin reading here in the book of Joshua. The Bible says in Joshua chapter 1, read the first nine verses. The Bible says this. So let me ask you, so if you love Jesus, say amen. 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 Let's try it one more time. If you love Jesus, say amen. amen. Absolutely. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Joshua 1, verse 1, the Bible says, Now after the death of Moses, we know who Moses is, don't we? He's a familiar guy. All right? We know who he is. The Bible says, A servant of the Lord came to pass, that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, to the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that I have given to you, as I said to Moses, from the wilderness unto this Lebanon, stay with me now, even to the great river, the river Euphrates, all the way to the Hittites, and to the great sea, toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage. For unto this people thou shalt divide for an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous. That thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it from the right hand to the left, that thou mayest prosper wheresoever thou goest. The Bible says, verse 8, Moses says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then... Thou shalt have good success. Verse 9 says, Have I not commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee wheresoever thou goest. Let me pray this morning. Lord Jesus, would you be with me as I preach your word today? I pray that this truth would penetrate every single heart. Lord Jesus, help us today to live the victorious Christian life. Help us, Lord Jesus, I pray in your name. Amen. You may be seated. Yeah, I don't know anybody that wants to live their life in defeat. And uh, I, I, don't, I don't know anybody that wants to, uh, I mean, I know, I know 
yesterday my Jayhawks lost. You know that, okay? I know it was by points that get scored in a basketball game, not a football game, all right? Uh, nobody likes to lose. Nobody does. I mean, even, I mean, you Missouri fans don't like your Tigers to lose, do you? Of course not. It happens a lot, but you don't like that to happen. It did. You know, nobody likes to lose. I mean, nobody wakes up in the morning and says, you know, I'd just like to lose today. I, 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 hope, I hope I lose my job. I hope I, hope I, I mess up some important relationships in my life. I mean... I, I mean, if some of you, you got you boys that go to school, your team boys, none of you guys go to school thinking, I don't like to fail a base test. It may happen, but you come saying, I just like to fail. F is my goal, you know. I, I would say every one of you that's a parent right now or has been a parent or is a grandparent, you, 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 you started that journey with the desire to, to, to be successful. Maybe you came from a, a, a home life or maybe you, maybe you didn't have a, a good mom or dad growing up, and you said, okay, I'm going to do this differently, I'm going to try to do this right, I want to succeed. And maybe you, you know, your, your kids are now teenagers, and you're like, this is tougher than I thought, okay? But you still want to succeed. Everybody I know wants to win. And you know, this sermon series is designed to help you win in the Christian life. The entire book of Joshua is full of, of hard-hitting, in-your-face truths about victory but also about defeat. As we'll get to in the next couple of weeks, you'll see some stories here where Joshua, this mighty man of God, suffers some serious, serious defeats. Now, we already read the passage, but three times in this passage, the words strength and strong and courageous are there three times. And so this morning, I'm going to hit on those just for the first, for this, this today's message. You know, would you be honest with me and say that sometimes we, we read the Bible and we, and we hear sermons sometimes that we hear some familiar things so much, Aaron, that sometimes these jewels of God's truth can sometimes slip through our fingers because we're so familiar with them? I think so. And I bet you many of you, you know who Joshua is and you know who Moses is. And maybe you even know Joshua, you know, you know, 24, verse 15, As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Maybe you know the verse in chapter 1, verse 8, that this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, that thou shalt meditate therein day and night. You know, you're about to be, you know those verses. But I, I want to dissect, if you'd let me today, these nine verses of Joshua 1. And I want to show you some things to help you live a victorious Christian life. Now let me put this in context. You've got to remember that for, for the, the children of Israel, now they've just finished wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. Remember they were held in captivity for 400 years by the Egyptians? Remember there Moses came in and he rescued them out of that captivity? Do you remember that? Do you remember, you know, maybe, maybe you saw the movie or Charlton Heston or a newer one, Let My People Go. And Moses, what did Moses say when, 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 what did Pharaoh say when Moses said, Let My People Go? He said... No. <laughs> and, uh, and so every time God does a miracle, and then Moses will come back to the Pharaoh, and he'll say, let my people go. And what does Moses say? No. Okay. And then the plagues come, and the frogs come, and the locusts come, and he keeps going back to Pharaoh. And he says, he says Pharaoh, God says, let my people go. And Pharaoh says, no. no. Every time. Well, eventually, uh, they are released. And they travel, they get away from Pharaoh, most of you know there, they, they cross the Red Sea, and they go there, and they're traveling through the wilderness. And then many of you remember the part where, as they're making their way to the, to the promised land, they disobey God. They send the twelve spies, they spy out Canaan, and they get afraid. As they bring the report back to Moses that we ought not go there, let us stay in the wilderness. Or maybe they even say, oh, just let's go back to Egypt. And God gets mad, gets righteous anger, and he says, fine. You're going to wander in this wilderness for 40 long years. And they do that. And everybody that was, that was older than 40 years, they all died. The only two people that survived that was, was, Mo, was Joshua and Caleb. Because they were the two spies that said, we ought to go. We ought to take the land. Well, here we are. They're ready to go. They're ready to take the land. And now we're diving into Joshua chapter 1. And in the very beginning here, we learn something that Moses is dead. Moses doesn't get to enter the promised land. And so we're introduced here in, 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 in verse 1. It says, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass, the Lord spake unto Joshua. Joshua was now going to be the man in charge. He was going to be the, be the man responsible for leading these millions of people into the promised land. But 
It's not going to be easy. You know, sometimes doing great things for God is not easy. Sometimes seeing, seeing God do the miraculous comes at a cost. It comes at a price. And I'll be honest with you, a lot of people are unwilling to pay that price. But God has some things to give us. We're willing to follow Him and do what He asks us to do. He has strength to give us. He has courage to give us. And this is what He has to give Joshua. And so I want to give you three things this morning that God gave to Joshua that I want to give to you about living the victorious Christian life, living your life with strength and courage. I want you to notice what the Bible says here in verse number 5. It says, There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage. Be strong and of good courage. For unto this people thou shalt divide for an inheritance that I swear unto their father. Let me say this one. Number one, strength and courage comes from God. Let me say that again. True strength and true courage comes from from God. Many of us, when I said, what is, what is strength? What is courage? You might immediately go to 9-11 and you might picture those firefighters going up the stairs to rescue people and say, that's courage. Or maybe you think of somebody, a young man, 18 and 19, 20 years old, going overseas to Iraq or Afghanistan and you may say, that's courage. That's, that's, and I believe that is. You may say, I know what courage is. Courage is, is doing right no matter the content. That's courage. But God tells, tells Joshua, hey, strength and courage comes from my presence. Look what he says here. He says, as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. Why is this important to Joshua? Why is it so important for Joshua to have the same strength and courage that Moses had? Well, I'll tell you why. He has now taken the hardest job in the world. He's now the ruler here of, of the Israelites. That's a pretty big job. Imagine, most of you know this week, Steve Jobs, founder of Apple. How many of you guys own an iPad or an iPhone or a Mac, Mac, a Mac computer? Hey, just raise your hand real quick. You got some people here today. You own that. Steve Jobs, he made that. You know, Tim Cook is now taking over the job at Apple. That's not a job I want to make the money. That's not a job I want to have, you know? That's a tough job. I mean, to step in and take the reins of, of the most lucrative company in America? I mean, who would want that, that responsibility? Some of you guys are like, I'd take that. I mean, I'm sure you would, you know? Uh, but it comes with a cost. It comes with a price. It's not going to be easy. The people are going to be looking at this guy thinking, let's see if he's really like Steve Jobs. Let's see if he's really got what it takes. No different. No different as Joshua took over from Moses that those people were studying him and staring him down and thinking, you know, I, I don't know if he's got what it takes. He's, he's not a Moses. He's not even like an Aaron. I, I, I don't know if he has it. And I bet you we read these Bible characters and we think they're, the, they're these superheroes, but they were just men and women like you and me. And I guarantee you, when, when Joshua was all alone and no one was around him, maybe he whispered to himself. Stephen, maybe he said, I don't know if I got it. I mean, I was with Moses for a long time, but I don't know. This is a tough job. You know, sometimes God will put us in, in places and positions that we may say to ourselves, I don't know if I got it. I don't know if I have what it takes. Some of you are in this church right now, and you're thinking about not coming back. So you say, you know what? I don't, know if I, have, I don't know if I have what it takes to be a Christian. I don't know if I have what it takes to live for God. I'll tell you what it takes. It takes strength. And it takes courage. And strength and courage come from God. It comes from spending time in the presence of God. You want to be a successful Christian? You want to be a good husband? You want to be a good father? You want to be a good deacon, a good Sunday school teacher, a good, a good person in this church? Spend some time with God. And all God's people say? Amen. Listen, don't say amen. I'll come right down here in the front and I'll amen myself. That's good preaching, Brother Malachi. I like that. Hey, strength and courage comes from God and time with God. You know why most, hey listen, most people don't spend time with God and they wonder why the Christian life is boring and dull. You, you know why most people don't have prayers answered? Because they don't pray. That was deep, wasn't it? The reason why most people, you know why people don't see amazing things? Because they don't attempt amazing things. You know, the, 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 someday uh, the epitaph is going to read on some people's graves. They had not because they asked not. You know, it's time for people to start believing God and asking God to do some big things in their life. Asking God to do some big things in their church. I tell you, I pray every week that God would fill this church up with people. I pray 
pray only that God would bring us more laborers for the harvest. I pray that God would double and triple the attendance of our church and use us to reach the communities around us. I pray that on October 28th, Craig, when we go to Garden City, that we see a harvest of souls. People come there. They feel love. Maybe some people come to the Lord Jesus. We ought to be praying that way and attending those things. Hey, it's time for us as God's people to spend time with God. Get a Bible out. Spend some time early in the morning and read the Word of God. Oh, it's easy to read USA Today. It's easy to read The Falling Star, isn't it? But it's sometimes hard to read the, to read the Word of God. The falling Star is a Kansas City Star. Fishing the catch out, all right? Spend some time with God. Amen. Amen. That's good. Strength and courage comes from God. Hey, you want, you want the courage and the strength it takes to live right when everyone else is living wrong? Spend some time in God's presence. He'll give it to you. If he would give it to Joshua, as he gave it to Moses, he'll give it to you. Young men, you want some strength and courage to live for God at school? Spend some time with God. Because most young men are not. Most men in general are not. And I'm talking to me right now. Hey, church, let's not be fake and phony. Let's not put on this, this as, as Cassian Crown says, this stained glass, stained glass masquerade. We're, we're, we're just hollow plastic people under shiny plastic steeples. Let's not be that way. Let's be the real deal. And if we're going to be the real deal, let's spend some time with God. I want every Sunday school teacher in this church, before you teach your class, I hope you spend some time with God. I want every deacon, before you do anything in this church as a deacon, I hope you spend some time with God. I want every director in this church, before you direct and do anything like that, spend some time with God. Listen, let's be people who know the face and presence of God. Because strength and courage comes from that. Listen, I don't know what you're facing this week. I don't know what it is. But what I do know is this. If you'll spend some time with God, time in His presence, He'll be with you as He was with Moses. He will be with you as He was with Joshua. He will be with you as He was with David taking down Goliath. He will be with you as He was there with the disciples as they, as they changed the world and turned it upside down. He'll be with you. Strength and courage comes from God. It comes from God. You know, I think about... How many of you guys know when I was just sitting here real quick? How many of you guys ever heard, of, ever heard of the preacher by the name of Adrian Rogers? Maybe some of you in this room know that name. Adrian Rogers was the pastor of Bellevue Baptist Church. I love what we're finding on Christian radio. One of the most powerful preachers of the, last, of the 21st century. After Adrian Rogers went to heaven a number of years ago, I had the chance to go to Bellevue Baptist Church. I mean... Their, their, whole, their parking lot is as big as all the property we own, okay? It's unbelievable. And I had a chance to spend some time talking to the pastor that took that church, Dr. Gaines. I asked Dr. Steve Gaines, I said, what is it? I said, tell me, Dr. Gaines, what is it like to fill the shoes of the one, one of the most well-known, well-respected, best preachers in the, last, in the 21st century? He made a very wise answer. He said, you know, Dr. Rogers took his shoes to heaven with him. Good answer. Good answer. Listen, he wasn't trying to fill Dr. Rogers' shoes. He was filling his shoes in the power, with the power and presence of God. He had strength and courage to do that. Amen. Not only does strength and courage come from God, but only that strength and courage comes from obedience to God. He says here, Be strong and of good courage for his people. Thou shalt divide it for an inheritance of the land which I swear to their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Strength and courage comes from obedience. It comes from obedience. Another translation says, Above all else, be thou strong and courageous. It is rare today to find people who have said, no matter what the Bible, I will say yes to God every single time. I will be obedient the best I know how. A lot of us, we try to reason the Bible away and say, you know, that's good for some people, but it's not good for me. That stuff about being a good husband is good for some people, but not for me. That stuff about being a good, a good whatever, it's good for them, but not for me. It's rare to find people with a burning, fiery passion to say, you know, I'm going to do everything God, I'm going to obey all that God gives me to do. Strength and courage comes from being obedient. How obedient are you today? What in your life right now is hindering your obedience to God? Maybe it's an attitude. Maybe it's, it's ought against a sister or a brother. Maybe it's you're justifying some sort of sin in your life. It's time to say, you know what? I'm going to be obedient to God. And God will give you the strength and courage to do that. And then you'll get strength and courage from doing that. Strength and courage comes from obeying God. Look what the Bible says here. He says here, Only be thou strong and courageous, thou mayest observe according to, to do all 
the law. What does all mean? It means all. I mean, seriously. And it means all the law. I think in some churches, people have tried to lower the bar and say, you know what? I don't, some preachers say, I don't want to offend very many people and say, you ought to do this, you ought to do that, don't do this, don't do that. So they try to water it down. And they say, well, you know, I mean, you know, it, it, just as long as you come in and maybe you just put a little money in the offering plate, that's okay. That's all God really expects of you. No! God expects His people to a higher standard. God expects His, the believers and followers of His Son, Jesus Christ, to live a different way, to do different things, and to obey everything He's given us to do. And it's not easy, but God will give us the strength and courage to do it. And when we do it, we'll have more strength and courage to be obedient. Listen, we need to decide with resolve as a church. We will be the type of church that obeys all that God gives us to do. We're going to be a church that says, you know what? It's nice that we have traditions and rituals, and that's fine. But above all else, be a church that obeys the Word of God. Listen, every, all that stuff's fine, but we better be obedient to the Word of God. And God's given this church a mission to take the gospel to every place around us and to make Jesus Christ known. And it's time we say, you know what? We will be strong. We will be courageous to obey all that God's given us to do as a church. How about it? Sunday school teachers, you will have no power to teach the Word of God if you're not living right with God. Leadership in the church will have no power and authority to be used of God and not obedient. It's time for us as a church to rise up and say, you know what, God, we've not been obedient to everything, but we will be now. Forgive us, Father. Forgive us. And use us once again. Listen, Joshua had a big job ahead of him. He was going to lead these people. It was his job to divide the inheritance to all the tribes. God told Abraham, I'm going to give you a promised land. And now Joshua's finally dividing the, the, this land up amongst the people. That's a big job. You know, God has a big job for you. Are you going to be strong and courageous to do it? You know how many people I want in this church serving? You know how many people in this church ought to be serving? Everybody that's sitting down right now. Church is not a spectator sport. It's a participant's game. And we, ought, we ought to all be involved. And there's something for you. It may not be being a teacher or an usher or a director, but God has something for you. God has something for you young men. God has something for you for you ladies and women. God has something for you men. He has something for all of us. And He wants us to be obedient. So how about it? How about it? Strength and courage comes from God. And He's given us what we need. Thirdly today, I want to say this. Not only does strength and courage come from God, and not only does strength and courage come from being obedient to God, but strength and courage brings hope. Strength and courage brings hope. The Bible says in verse number 9, Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, be not dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee wheresoever thou goest. Now, stay with me for a second. God has already told Joshua twice he's going to give him strength and he's going to give him courage. So why is God now telling Joshua a third time about strength and courage? To be obedient and to go forward and to take the land. Because God knows, you know, sometimes we just need to be reminded and it brings hope. You know, sometimes it's a, we hear something and it, just, it brings encouragement to our soul. Something we've heard many times before, but we hear it again. It's like, thank you. I mean, I picture this, this, these nine verses as like a locker room pep talk. Which, and I, I say that a lot about different parts of the Bible, but God's encouraging Joshua for the hardest task known to any leader. And God just reminded him one more time. He said, hey, Joshua, just in case you forgot, be strong and courageous. I'm going to be with you. I mean, it, 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 it's like the coach there in the locker room in, 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 in a football locker room. Now, I only played football for two years. Uh, I know I look like a star running back. I really am not, okay? Uh, I, I'm a runner, all right? Most of you guys, yeah, we know that, okay? But I remember that when I was in football, uh, I was in junior high football. Now, this is going to surprise you. I played two positions. On defense, I played a, a cornerback, okay? And, uh, again, I don't watch much football, but that's the guy trying to make sure these receivers don't catch the ball, okay? Now, your head if you know the Okay. All right, I played another position on offense. This is going to surprise you. I was the center, all right? I snapped the ball, all right? That's kind of odd. You're on, the, you're on the offensive line, okay, on offense, and you're a cornerback, 
on defense. Very strange. I got massacred so many times on the offensive line, all right, for very apparent reasons, all right? And I tell you, when I, when, I, when I was in junior high seventh grade football, I was deathly afraid of the eighth graders because they were out to kill me, all right? I mean, it, it, it was a, I dreaded going to practice every day. And I remember before practice every day, they all right, we're going to do practice today. He said, all right, I want you to hit him hard. <laughs> Hard. I mean, you know, don't tell them that, coach. You know, I'm sure that they could they, 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 they could they could give like a, a picture of a dead boy from the Letterman jackets, right? Because some of these guys have learned it, okay? And uh, uh, every day, come on, you say something every day. Right, good practice. We're gonna run hard. We're gonna work hard. We're gonna hit hard uh, uh, every day. And then the locker room and games, he'd say, all right, we're gonna we need defense. We need defense. Uh, and sometimes the coach would repeat himself so many times. It wasn't because he forgot what he said, because he was trying to make a point. And in this passage, God is trying to make a point to Joshua. Hey, be strong and courageous. I'm with you. Oh, yeah, be strong and courageous because uh, I need you to be obedient. But, oh, yeah, don't forget to be strong and courageous. I mean, you picture being the guy to take over Moses. It's not an easy job. You picture the guy to lead three or million plus griping, bitter people. To the, to, I mean, listen, they're, they're about ready to take on giants. They're about ready to go to the promised land. You remember when Joshua spied out the land 40 years earlier? There were giants in and, 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 and the land? They're still there. They're still in the land. Joshua knows. I mean, I just see him thinking, okay, I, 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 can, I, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. And God, you know, he's the, he's the little Israelite that could. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. And God says, hey, Joshua, don't forget, I'm with you. I'm with you, buddy. I'm behind you. I'm in your corner. I'm with you everywhere you go. Hey, what if you knew verbatim that God was going to be with you this week everywhere you went? Would you walk around, I, I, I don't know, I'm kind of afraid to carry my Bible with me. I'm kind of afraid to pray over my food. I'm kind of afraid to share the gospel. No. If you, if, if you literally believe that God was with you everywhere you went this week, you, 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 you wouldn't have, you have a problem praying. Hey, my God's with me. Hey, if you have an opportunity to witness, you say, my God's with me, I'm going to witness. It came time to do right and wrong. I'm going to do right, my God's with me. Strength and courage. Strength and courage brings hope. Hey, listen, if you're down today, if you're in the depths of despair, maybe you're thinking about giving up or giving in. Maybe it's a financial issue, a relationship issue. Let me say to this to you today. Strength and courage will give you hope. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, God lives inside your heart and He's with you everywhere you go. With you everywhere you go. Let that give you strength. Let that give you church courage. Let that help you hold your head up high. Let that fire you up and do something for God. Church, we, we, we start dreaming big and planning big. Just remember, God's with us everywhere we go. When we go to Garden City on the 28th of this month to have our harvest festival, God's with us. When we go out to share the gospel with the neighbors around us, God's with us. That brings hope. Hey, listen. That brings hope. I want to conclude with this this morning. Strength and courage. We're going to look at the entire book of Joshua in the months ahead. Months ahead. I said that would be for a year. We're in, the, in the, about the eight, eight, nine weeks ahead. But there are some defeats that come. But they come because Joshua and them weren't obedient to this first part of this passage here. You know, strength and courage comes from God. The presence of God. Spending time with God. Maybe you need to spend some time with God today. Quit playing the game. Quit being a fake and a phony and get out and get home today and spend some time in your Bibles, spend some time on your knees, spend some time with the Lord Jesus. Strength and courage will come when we're obedient. It's time to say yes to God every time, whatever it is. And strength and courage brings hope. I remember a story one time of a, this atheist was, was giving this speech at a huge rally in, Thousands of people were there. And again, I, this is just an illustration I heard of years ago. And he gets up there and he starts to say, God is not real. God is a fake and God's a phony. God's a fake and God's a phony. And he starts saying that. And he starts just challenging the crowd. Can anyone prove me wrong? Can anyone prove me wrong? If God's real, why don't God do something right now? And everyone's afraid to stand up against this guy because he's, he's somebody. He's, this, he's a well-known, professing atheist who doesn't believe in God. And even the Christians are sitting out in the crowd. They're afraid to do anything. He says, see, God ain't real. God's not real. But you know, there was a little girl, not very old, in the back of that auditorium, that, of that massive meeting, this little girl stands up. And she begins to sing quietly the famous hymn, Stand Up. Stand up for Jesus. 
ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner. It must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead till every foe is vanquished and Christ is Lord indeed. And she sings it again. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead till every foe is vanquished and Christ is Lord indeed. And before long, like one awesome, huge, mighty choir, everybody is on their feet and they're singing it with all they've got. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. And guess what? That guy in the front, he was long gone. Because one little girl had strength and courage to stand up for Jesus. Would you stand with me this morning? Just so stand there. Come sing that with me. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall he Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soul.